Hey gang, Tim here at Pro Electronics, and today we're gonna set up the Pi Relay version two hat with a Raspberry Pi single ball computer. By the end of this guide, you're gonna know exactly how to control these four relays through scripts, through voice activation, or through a touchscreen GUI. Simply, a relay is a electronically operated switch. The four on this hat are strong enough to switch loads up to 30 volts DC at 10 amps. Relays like this and home automation go hand in hand. All these relays are controlled through I2C communication and these hats can be stacked for even more relay control. In this big world, there is a whole bunch of high current, high voltage devices. Now, a Raspberry Pi single ball computer operates at five volts. If 30 volts were driven through it, our computer would break. So does that mean we cannot control high current or high voltage devices with our five volt computer? Absolutely not. We can use relays. We can send our relay a signal at five volts from our Raspberry Pi. That signal will then open or close the electrical flow to our external high voltage system. Performing on the table is everything you're going to need. Use any Raspberry Pi single ball computer. Here, I'm using a Raspberry Pi 4 Model B. You're gonna need a Pi Relay version two hat, along with the standoffs that come with it. From here on out, you're just gonna need everything to run this Raspberry Pi as a desktop computer. We will also need a little Phillips head screwdriver too. We also want an externally powered system for these relays to turn on and off. Here, I have a little DC motor connected up to a battery. Whenever I complete the circuit, the motor will spin. For voice control, we will need a USB microphone like this. For touchscreen control, we will want a mini GPIO screen like this WaveShare 3.5 inch LCD. Begin assembly by attaching those nylon standoffs to the hat. Then attach the hat to the top of the Raspberry Pi. When doing this, line up the headers of the hat with the GPIO pins of the Raspberry Pi carefully. Then push both boards firmly together. Make sure the hat is fully seated and screw in those two nylon screws. This is a good opportunity to note the yellow jumpers on the top right of the board. If you pull any of these off, then the corresponding relay is no longer going to be powered. Now, let's attach our external system to the Relay 1 outputs on the hat. Let me state here, if you have no experience working with mains powers, do not hook up mains powers to a relay. Particularly in Australia, our 240 volts at 50 hertz AC is life threatening. It's proper necessary to have credentials, experience, knowledge, and certificates if you're gonna try and do that. So for today, I will attach devices that are all safely driven through battery power. For demonstration purposes, it's gonna be this brushed DC motor that I've connected directly to a nine volt battery. The two ends of my system are right here. Now to complete this circuit, all we need to do is push these two wires together. These two wires are what we're gonna to connect to the relay. The PCB hat has four groups of three screw down terminal connectors with a label next to them for which relay it corresponds to. Each relay has the outputs NO for normally open, COM for common ground, and NC for normally closed. We want our system to be unpowered unless the relay is activated. Therefore, I will connect the black wire to the COM and the red wire to the normally open of relay one. The external system is connected to the NO and the COM screw down terminals. If instead you wanted to stop the power going to the external system whenever the relay is activated, you're gonna attach your positive red wire to the NC port. In scripts, we will refer to and identify the relays by the numbers written on the PCB board. With that complete, insert a micro SD card flashed with Raspberry Pi OS and hook it up as a desktop computer. Add a mouse, keyboard, and HDMI to a monitor. 
Then power up the Raspberry Pi system by plugging in a USB-C connector. With power into the system and the boot up wizard complete, you will be welcomed by that Raspberry Pi desktop. The Pi Relay version 2 hat requires I2C communication to work. By default on Raspberry Pi OS, this communication method is turned off. So the very first software step is to turn that on. Open up the Raspberry Pi configuration menu found using the top left menu and scrolling over preferences. Then enable I2C connection found under the interfaces tab. While here, double check that one wire is disabled. If enabled, Relay 4 will not operate correctly. Also check the serial port is enabled. Reboot to lock in these changes. Now with your system rebooted and connected to the internet, open up a new terminal window by pressing the black button on the top left of the screen. This terminal window will enable us to download from the internet the exact packages we require. Type and enter the following lines into the terminal to get the packages that you will need. You can also copy and paste these terminal lines one by one from the full written up article, link down in the description. If prompted, type and enter Y to continue the installations. Once completed, we have fully set up our Raspberry Pi single board computer to work with our Pi Relay version 2 hack. The first Python script we are interested in is called test.py. We can find it by jumping through the directory structure like so. As you've completed the above terminal commands, you will have these example scripts in the exact same location too. From here, let's open up a Python interface like Phony IDE. Click on the applications menu. This is the Raspberry Pi symbol on the top left of the screen. Hover over the programming tab to find Thony IDE. Thony IDE is just a Python interpreter software and you can use whichever is your preference. Copy and paste the following from the section in the written up article straight into your coding area. Then simply save the script in the same directory location and run it by pressing the big green run button. As soon as we do, our connected external system will activate for a second before switching off. You would have also been able to hear the noise as each electromechanical relay clicks on and off. You also get this really nice LED light that shows up each time one of them is activated. Allow me a second to dive through the script so we can see exactly what is going on. The first two lines import all the necessary packages. Here we need time and our downloaded Pi relay package. Then we create variable names to quickly identify and target each relay that we want to have activated. The very next line is a command to toggle on relay one as labeled on the Pi Relay version two, R1 dot on. This activates the relay. Then the next line is a small time delay. Relay one will remain energized during this delay. The next line is the command to toggle off relay one as labeled on the Pi Relay version two, and that is R1 off. The pattern is then repeated for all relays. Note that all relays upon the end of the Python script are de-energized. A relay left on for a long time will get warm. If your relay is getting hot, the service life of your relay is likely coming to an end. Let's now activate these relays using only our voice. Any word or phrase could be spoken to get our external system started. We just need to code it coded in. Your system is going to need internet connection for voice control to work, and also a connected USB microphone. There is a default example script that you can locate by jumping through these folders. It is named pyrelayvoicecontrol.py. To correctly run this script, we will need to adjust this line so that way the script can focus on our specific microphone. The fastest way to figure out exactly what to write here is to run a two line Python script I created called miclist.py. Open it and run it in Thony IDE as you would normally. The 
As soon as you do it, it will print out a list of all the connected audio inputs. You can see it over here. With my connected USB microphone, the text string that we want starts with USB and it's right here. If you're using a different microphone, this is going to be different. Copy and paste this string into our voice control script, like so. You can now save and run the Python script by pressing the big green run button. As soon as you do it, it's gonna spit out to the shell the output, say something. With clear dictation, speak out loud and directly to your Raspberry Pi the following phrase. Turn on relay one. Let's give it another go. Turn on relay one. Ha ha ha! And as soon as you can do it, and that the Google speech recognition has figured out exactly what you said, our relay one is going to turn on. Turn off relay one. So as you can see, the words that I speak is picked up by the Google speech recognition software and it outputs to the shell what it believes you said. If what you said is registered correctly, Relay1 will energize. Now this is really cool. To stop all the relays from being energized, say clearly, turn off all relays. Let's now look at the script and create a custom phrase that will activate our relay. The first section of the script is very similar to before, except we are also importing speech recognition functionality. Variables are created for the relays along with the connected microphone. And sampling rates are decided for the voice recognition. Then an infinite loop is created to constantly listen to our voices. Looking here, we can see that the relays are activated only when the correct phrase is said, understood accurately, and the phrase contains enough trigger words to get deep enough into the if statement trees. Once it does this, it will hit a relay1.on or a similar statement. Once we reach that statement, the Raspberry Pi is going to activate relay1. The end of the script has some exceptions that will print out information to the shell to aid in troubleshooting. Now, to add our custom keyword, let's jump into the script and locate that try section found within the while true infinite loop. This section breaks down the words it has identified from our speech and searches for trigger words. These words are organized in layers of if statements. This format is what I will mimic for our unique keyword. Nosy down to the bottom of these if trees and add a custom one to it. I also will pay close attention to get the correct indentation. So now our search will also look for the words let also search for the words it. And if it finds those two words, then it will turn our relay one on. So let's save the script and run. Ah, indentation error. So by tabbing this like so, I should have fixed the problem. Having fixed some of those indentations, we'll give it another go. Let it rip. Now, whenever I say let it rip, the Raspberry Pi will recognize the two trigger words let and it, spit out a message to the shell output, energize the relay, and most importantly, start our DC motor. Now, if you just want a touch screen that you can click on to easily turn on or off your relays, this is how you're going to do it. Start by attaching a GPIO connected mini touchscreen like this WaveShare 3.5 inch LCD to your system. I've created a guide on setting the screen up, so check the description for that if you need. Simply, the GPIO screen can mount directly on top of the SB Components Relay V2 hat, which is mounted onto the Raspberry Pi single board computer. We got a double stack on our hands. Now, the GUI script can be found from the full written up article and is named pyrelaygui.tim.py. Open it up and run it in Thony IDE, just like before. The GUI will open up as a full screen window and display on your little screen like so. 
We can now simply tap on the screen to activate relays in the system. I also included a shutdown and reboot button. With a connected keyboard, use the keystroke combination Alt F4 to close the GUI window. The final step is to run this GUI script automatically on boot. We can do this with CronTab. We have a guide on CronTab, link to it down in the description. With that completed, whenever you reboot the Raspberry Pi, it's gonna provide this full screen interface. Check the full written up guide if you want to know exactly how to do this. You now have the ability to turn on and off these relays through scripts, voice, and a touchscreen GUI. So feel free to plug in a smorgasbord of devices that will all have their power toggled by your Raspberry Pi. Another worthwhile pursuit for relay control would be a Raspberry Pi locally hosted GUI website. This web server would have toggle buttons, just like our GUI, which we could turn on and off on any locally connected device. The realm of home automation opens up to us when we venture down the path of relay controls. And with Raspberry Pi, it has never been easier. And that's all for today. We are full-time makers and always keen to help. So until next time, stay cozy.